So Action Pack Networks, uh, we, what we do is we develop QoS software that's very interactive. That's our specialty, and um, this is obviously for network in, uh, network engineers. Most of our capabilities are focused on Cisco products. We do support other common platforms as well. And with that brief introduction, we're going to jump right into the uh, the interesting part of the webinar. So, what we're going to do first is we're just going to cover a brief NetFlow overview. Most of you probably are familiar with NetFlow. You're probably using NetFlow tools, NetFlow collectors. Um, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. But just a little history of NetFlow. NetFlow, obviously, is a Cisco technology. It was developed in the late 90s. And it was originally called NetFlow switching. So its original intent was as a switching technology, a flow-based switching technology, interestingly enough. Part of that capability was it had a traffic accounting feature. So you could keep track of the traffic that was actually um, switching. And that, it, that obviously became the interesting part of this NetFlow switching technology that's lived on through today. So as far as where it's gone, um, we'll talk a little bit about that. And that's the focus of this webinar here. So in terms of what NetFlow does, uh, the analogy I like to do, or I like to use, is NetFlow is like the call records that you see on your mobile phone bill. So at the end of the month, you uh, look at your mobile phone bill. It has a record of all the calls that were made, the numbers that the, the, the um, calls were made to or received from, the length of the call, et cetera. So that's basically what NetFlow is, except it's with network traffic. So again, NetFlow is like the, uh, the call records on your mobile phone bill. Um, if you were to listen to a recording of a conversation, that's like a packet sniffer. So that's the, the analogy I like to I like to use, and with this, um, you know, with these call records that you get, you can get a lot of information. You know, you can find out who who called whom, how many calls were made in an hour, how many calls were made in a month, how many total minutes of calls in a month, and with this information, you can do some things like, for example, if you keep exceeding the amount of minutes you have per month, then obviously, you probably want to consider changing your plan. Same thing with NetFlow. If you're um, exceeding the bandwidth frequently or you're, ta you're tapping out your bandwidth frequently on a WAN link, for example, then you might want to consider uh, upping that, that WAN link speed. So a lot of useful information you get from NetFlow. So the two most common versions of NetFlow. So NetFlow evolved from the switching technology and really it became a, uh, the important part of it became an accounting feature and that's lived on. So we're up to version uh, 9 today, version 5 is also commonly used, probably the most commonly used version. But really, to, in order to expand NetFlow to accommodate new, new capabilities, um, version 9 is where all of the usefulness comes in. So it, version 9 also works hand in hand with flexible NetFlow. And what this allows Cisco to do is it provides the extensibility to modify the NetFlow capability without uh, re requiring um, vendors like us to continually um, you know, make changes to our code to keep up with those changes. Uh, incidentally, version 9 was also used as the basis for IP fix, which is a, an RFC, um, RFC 5101 is the, the main one. So other vendors have created their own versions of NetFlow, um, different variants like SFlow and JFlow you'll hear. Uh, also, of course, vendors have adopted IP fix. And as far as on Cisco platforms, NetFlow is supported on virtually all Cisco routers and some switches. And that's uh, where we're going to focus in on today because we have obviously a, a new development in there and a key part of Cisco's product line. Flexible NetFlow and uh, NetFlow v uh, version 9 are also being expanded for other uses. So we see them used in the ASAs for handling log information. Uh, and you'll see with uh, what we're going to show you today some of the additional capabilities. And so we're seeing more and more capabilities outside of just standard traffic accounting that, that Cisco is taking advantage of. Yeah, I actually really like using that tool on those ASAs. It really helps me troubleshoot um, you know, how my rules are set up, what traffic's going to what DMZs, what traffic can pass through, what traffic can't. really gives you a view into um, how your traffic is moving through that firewall. So it can help you troubleshoot that for the security environment. And so in terms of uh, Cisco's product line, 
As most of you know, NetFlow is not supported on the access switches for the most part. So there's essentially been a whole industry that's popped up to help solve this problem, give visibility into the access layer of the network. And what they, the, the way that's primarily solved is to use a span port on the switches and then attach a probe to that span port, and then you do some configuration on there. And you essentially copy traffic from ports you want to monitor out to the span port, and then the sniffer or the probe sits on that, can either capture information or actually regenerate uh, or, or generate NetFlow packets that you'll send to a management tool. So that's really the, the primary way people have gotten around this. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go right into the, the, these new capabilities. So uh, NetFlow is now supported on 3750s and the 3560s, but we want to show you, you know, what that means for the platform, what kind of capabilities are there. It's not a full-blown NetFlow um, that you'll see on, on uh, Cisco's routers, for example, so you'll want to be aware of those, those differences. So the NetFlow capability that you see on the 3750s and the 3560s is actually a specialized form of, of a NetFlow called Performance Monitor, and it uses the flexible NetFlow and version 9 um, templates as its medium for delivering information. And this Performance Monitoring capability is part of Cisco's MediaNet architecture. So Cisco's been doing some really exciting things with MediaNet. And basically what this is, is it's a network that is intelligent and designed to facilitate the delivery of video and other rich media applications. And part of that capability is this performance monitoring um, that you'll see on, the, on the, the access switches here. There's also some other things that we're also um, supporting, like IPSLA video operation, um, and there's some additional capabilities like auto configuration that is, is built into the platforms as well. So some pretty exciting stuff there. So in terms of the performance monitor capability, the primary use is to troubleshoot and understand um, the performance of rich media and also incidentally application flows. So uh, in terms of rich media, we're talking about RTP streams. And in terms of the application flows, we're talking about TCP. So in this, um, in these NetFlow, records, you'll see information such as jitter, uh, packet loss, round trip time, so some really interesting metrics that you can get in real time from the actual switches. Uh, also I should mention this performance monitoring capability uh, is also supported on their ISR platform, so both the ISR G1 and G2, this capability has been out for a little while now, and um, now it's being ported over to other platforms, obviously like the Catalyst 3750 and 3560s. Now, the interesting thing about this um, release, this new release that came out, so it's supported on iOS 12.258 SE, the IP base and IP services images. Um, the interesting thing is Cisco actually pulled this, I think, within two weeks after it was actually released, and the reason was they found some bugs in the, uh, the FSH implementation. So we're actually using that, um, that build that was out for a little while on the download site. You can't get it now, unfortunately. But Cisco is actually um, looking to release an update sometime this month, so look for that uh, on, their, on their download, support, on their support site. The, uh, the images are about, or require 16 megabytes of flash, so you'll notice this will be too big to work on some of the older platforms, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that here. So in terms of the 3560, these are the unsupported platforms. You can do a show inventory on your devices to, to see what the, uh, the the number that shows up, and you can match it to these. If it matches with any of these, then it's not you're not going to be able to run that um, that new code. So you can see these are mostly older 3560s, and uh, likewise for the 3750, these are mostly the the older platforms. So any of the E's, the S's, uh, basically the newer stuff is going to support this capability. All right, so we're going to dive right into configuring uh, this NetFlow capability performance monitor on the 35, 3750 and the 3560. So let's jump right into the config here. So since it uses flexible NetFlow with version 9, there obviously is going to be components there to get that to work. So you're going to use the kind of standard 
um, configuration that would, you would use to configure your flow exporter. That's going to be the part of the uh, the config that sends the collector records to uh, to the collector, which would be a management tool like ours. Um, and then you also have to configure the flow monitor. So this is the part of the config that stores the flows. And then there's a piece of the config that's specific to performance monitor. So there's actually two ways that you can do this. There's an easier, kind of less flexible method. I'll show you both of these in this, in this uh, webinar. And this is called an inline config. And then there's the more flexible class map, policy map method that uses the uh, C3PL command structure that Cisco uses on their, um, their uh, QoS mechanism. So if you're familiar with that, you'll be re ready to go with the C3PL format in a performance monitor. So what I've done is taken some screenshots here. So this is the Flexible NetFlow exporter config. So you can see here we're creating a, an exporter that's pointing to our live action tool. Uh, the standard NetFlow port number is 2055. And then we put a template data timeout here. So we've got 60 here. What the template data timeout does is it tells um, it tells the it, it actually sends the the template to the collector because with with flexible NetFlow and NetFlow version nine, you actually have to send the template of what the records look like to the collector so it knows how to decode them essentially. Now this is the inline config. So this is the easier of the configs and it's really a quick way to get started with the um, with the performance monitoring capabilities. Uh, one interesting thing is you also have to enable MLS QoS in order to get this working. So be mindful of your trust boundaries when you do that because by default um, the trust is not set up. Is that right, David? That's correct. Yeah. Um, so what we have here is the service policy. It's the type performance monitor, and then the inline command is right there. And then flow monitor inline, and then record default RTP. This is actually a little shortcut I'll talk a little bit about. And then the exporter live action. So we're going to send these uh, records to live action, um, the, the IP address of the live action product. Now, a little thing here uh, to note, you can actually put some match statements in line here. They would go uh, right in front of this flow monitor inline statement. So you can do things like match DSCP, CS5, AF41EF. So in this case, I'd be looking for the important traffic in my network, the, the uh, critical real-time traffic in my network, and I would just match on that. So that's a way to narrow down um, what exactly you're going to collect on. This is the, um, the little shortcuts I was talking about, so hopefully you can see this here. But what this is is the um, default RTP match and collect statement. So you saw that line in the previous slide. Let me just back up here real quick. So this uh, default RTP line, that's a shortcut for all the stuff that you see under here. So all these match statements are already canned for you. It's matching on the, the, uh, the common um, Actually, it's a six-tuple six here because it's adding the RTP S source, synchronization source. But you got you know your, your typical things, pro, um, the protocol type, source and destination address, etc. And then it's collecting on all of these fields here. So there's a number of things that are interesting. You can see the mean, min, max, jitter, um, a lot of interesting things here. And so we pull these in in our uh, live action product. And then likewise for the uh, default TCP, so if you remember, Performance Monitor provides uh, performance information for both RTP streams as well as TCP um, sessions. Um, so again, you know, you got your, your match statements up here and then your collect statements. A little bit less information, we don't get the jitter information and things of that nature, but you do see things like round trip time and, it, and there's also a, a loss counter as well, which is really useful. C3PL config, it's more flexible, but a little bit more complicated. So you got to define class maps and policy maps to find how you want to um, classify your traffic that you're interested in. Um, this is just a really wide open config that I'm using on this demo. So we have an ACL here that just is matching anything, but you can put anything in that ACL. And then we're putting that into the policy map. So we're, we're matching on class 
class match any. But this is kind of the basis of the C3PL config that you would use with um, Performance Monitor. Yeah, it's worth noting that you can actually reuse any of your existing policy maps and uh, class maps there. You just have to change the policy map there to be of that performance monitor type, and you can make use of that stuff that you've already got configured. Yeah, right. So if you're using um, if you're using class maps for a QoS policy, you can, like David's saying, you can actually just map that over to performance monitor. And um, I'll, I'll show you a little trick with live action. It actually has an ACL editor and a class map editor that you can use to help you build those up. Now this is just some um, information, caveats, some things that we observed, um, also information that's in Cisco's notes. So it works on both Layer 2 and Layer 3 interfaces, so this is pretty cool. This will actually allow you to see inter-VLAN traffic, so something of note there. Um, there's some thresholding capability with alert, so you can actually configure, I didn't really show it here, but there's actually configuration statements to set a threshold on a certain parameter, like say jitter or lost packet, and you can actually send those alerts via syslog to a, uh, a syslog server. And as I mentioned, you can monitor TCP connection performance, so you can look at how, like if you, if you want to monitor a server um, and, and see what kind of TCP connection performance you're getting on that server, you have that capability to do that with performance monitor. And I mentioned some of the other capabilities with, um, with MediaNet, and one of those is IPSLA video operation, and this is also supported in 12.258 FE. So with this capability, you can actually have the switches generate synthetic um, video traffic and um, do this, you know, like if you're testing or if you're trying to recreate a problem or if you're doing an assessment, you can actually have the switches generate the um, video traffic from the switches themselves. Okay, so some more information. Note that these iOS upgrades can take a while, um, something like 20, 25 minutes or longer. So take note of that when you're planning to do your upgrades. As I said before, you have to turn on MLS QoS, so be, be aware of your trust boundaries. And then it only works on physical ports and on ingress. So take note of that. And also key here is this capability is done in software. So, you know, there's going to be a CPU and memory impact. And we recommend that you do your lab testing, do your due, due diligence here, and test out your scenarios in the lab. And, you know, according to what type of performance you're getting, you may need to limit some of the performance monitoring traffic to just your critical traffic. So something you're going to want to experiment with. We also found some things that may be bugs in the code, so we're work, we've uh, reported these to Cisco, but there's no interface indexes that are coming back, so I'll show you what the ramifications of that are in the demo. And we also found that the inline config didn't always take, so we're not sure if that's due to our platform or if it's a bug in the system or, or not, but hopefully that'll get squared away. And then we've also noticed on our 3750s Sometimes the, the performance monitoring um, statistics would stop, and you'd have to remove the flow monitors from each interface and add them back. So hopefully these things will get resolved in the, um, the second version that they're going to be releasing here shortly. Yeah, it's worth noting that this technology is obviously pretty bleeding edge here. So um, you know, just keep that in mind when you start playing around with it. You start experimenting with with these new features. Just know this is. You know, it's brand new, so um, if you've worked with Cisco for a while, you know what that can mean.